Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototypus Mystery. This will be part 364. We're continuing with our lesson titled, The Beginning of Sorrows Reviewed. This will be part 2. Scripture teaches, when the worldwide judgment of the Lord falls, it will destroy the wicked by their doings. Mm -hmm. But it will bless the righteous by their doings. Everything is going to be predicated off of what the individual is doing at the time of the judgment. What is his lifestyle? That's going to be the snare brings on his judgment. So just to briefly uh, qualify, mm -hmm. if somebody just for example is I don't know, running around doing drugs, behaving new in that manner, should we understand that he dies of an overdose for example? Possibly, he will die as a result of his activities. Right. Jeremiah 23, verse Therefore saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, you have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them, behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, mm. saith the Lord. So the judgment is going to fall, no matter what the crea crea career is, whatever the activity is, that is going to be the measure of the judgment that falls on the individual. <clears throat> Turn to Jeremiah 25. You see the example of this. 25, 35 to 36. And the shepherd shall have no way to flee, nor the principle of the flock to escape. A voice or a sound of the cry of the shepherds, and an howling of the principle of the flock, shall be heard, for the Lord hath spoiled their pastor. Now, <clears throat> the word spoiled there comes from a Hebrew term, sadad, which means laid waste. <laughs> So what's being said here is the judgment has fallen on these people in a way in which their palatial estates, their paradise habitations, have suddenly turned into torment regions. That's why the scripture describes them as howling and uh, <clears throat> being in agony. He radically changes their environment to uh, <clears throat> a judgment commensurate with what they have themselves brought into being. Has there been any time in, in history where the environment changes in the same way that we see it's going to happen at the beginning no. of service? No. no. So no human has ever heard of anything like this? No. Uh, that's what we say, the reality shift. This happens at this point, it's also going to happen later on at the tribulation period where the nations that have mistreated Israel will suddenly find themselves in a literally torment region <clears throat> because <clears throat> the Lord will effectively change the reality from one of pleasantness to one of torment. Sure. So Mr. Jones, let me bring this up. Mm -hmm. Okay, we know that there was, a, there was an occurrence in, in Scripture where the earth opened up and swallowed hundreds of people mm -hmm. and, uh, and animals and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. That is a that's a torment. That's a judgment. That's a, that's a major incident that the human race has undergone, but it doesn't measure with what we're reading here. No, 
all that did was uh, that has to do with um, <coughs> Dathan and Byram, the princes yes. of uh, <coughs> Levi, to try to assert their authority over Moses. What happened was the earth opened up and sent them down to a torment region. It wasn't that where they were turned okay. to a torment right, region. Right, right, right. Very interesting. <coughs> but the point is, that would be what he's just described, would be the closest to, and you know, it doesn't measure anywhere near, but it's yeah. the closest it, it could be. Yes. Hmm. Yes. In that the <coughs> ascent bodily into another reality. Right. And it was regional. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a great point. Yes. Turn to <coughs> Ezekiel 7th chapter verse 7 and 8. As we're turning, I mean, it occurs to me that just the idea of the environment turning into the torment regions is enough to kill people. You know, that's a heart attack material, isn't it? Sure. Sure. Ezekiel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which? Seventh chapter. <clears throat> Verses seven to eight. Yes. <clears throat> the morning is come unto thee. O thou that dwellest in the land, the time has come, the day of trouble is near. <clears throat> and not the sounding again of the mountains. What does that mean, sounding again of the mountains? Well, it's talking about you're in a period of activity in which you have earthquakes, volcanic activity, seismic goings on. But he's saying this is not that. This is something that's radically different. Now, I will surely, shortly pour out my fury upon thee and accomplish mine anger upon thee and I will judge thee according to thy ways the same judgment and I will recompense <clears throat> thee for all thine abominations this is the judgment that's being spoken Jeremiah <clears throat> 25 the judgment is crafted is designed to take the person down according to his own activities we see another example of this. <coughs> Drop down to verse 10 to 13. Behold the day, behold it is come. The morning is gone forth. The rod hath blossomed, pride hath budded. So it starts with <coughs> a condition that's set in. Incitation. Pride, which leads to ultimately anger, which leads to violence. Mm -hmm. People are going to feel slighted, you're going to feel offended, and it's going to initiate a response which, uh, of course, will be <clears throat> aggressive. Violence is risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor of their multitude nor of any of theirs, neither shall there be wailing for them. So it's talking about this condition is going to result in their destruction, their death. The time has come, the day draweth near, let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. The buyers and the sellers are coming under judgment. <clears throat> For the seller shall not return to that which is sold. Now, this is talking about the merchandise. This violence takes re, uh, 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 result as a effect as the result of the thing that's being sold. <coughs> it may be that somebody feels they're not getting enough money. It may be that somebody feels that <coughs> their uh, the merchandise is inferior. But pride turns to Arrogance turns to violence, turns to vitriolic assault, aggression. <clears throat> For the seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they were yet alive. Now, this t tells us what the merchandise is. It's people. The word they refers to that which is being sold. 
<coughs> the seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they were yet alive, for the vision is touching the whole multitude, the buyers and the sellers mm. thereof, which shall not return, neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. In other words, it's saying this buying <coughs> and selling is what's initiating their destruction. Mm. And it's not, none of them are going to profit, buyer and seller both are going to wind up coming under judgment. So it should, oh, please. And that which is sold is going to perish also. So should we continue that the human trafficking, which is prevalent now, becomes normalized to where this is a normal activity? Yes. You sell chickens, you sell eggs, yes. you sell humans. people, yeah. It's, it's going to wind up. That happens. <clears throat> when the deep state consolidates its power and then it reaches a point where <clears throat> they, they create the laws, they do what they want to do when they want to do it because they dominate the, the FEMA camps are full of people you have uh, literally the world being one great big dictatorship whatever country you go into it's going to be the same so you could draw a direct line through the adrenochrome delivery vans that are running around in Switzerland that we mentioned the other day and this sure. th this, this is it sure. this is the precursor what you have yeah what's in the world now this is the result everything <coughs> is going to reach a stage where what was what was a restraint oh you don't kill babies right becomes um part and parcel of the, the, they don't recognize life Hmm. They don't value life. They're looking at whatever it is as what kind of a profit can I get from this. Dog, cat, baby, person, doesn't matter. It's going to be a global trafficking system that deals with the living and the, they're going to sell de sure. dead things as sure. well as living things. And when the judgment falls, it's going to fall on them by the activities that they are perpetuating. Yes. And to take them down to destruction. <coughs> Ezekiel 32. Verse 18. <clears throat> Remember, we're looking at this is this is the judgment of uh, Jeremiah 25, which says this judgment is going to fall on everybody who is engaged in whatever activity they're engaged in. That's going to be their judgment. <clears throat> Son of man, wail for the multitude of Egypt and cast them down, even her and the daughters of the famous nations, into the neither parts of the earth, with them that go down into the pit. This is a judgment in which countries or peoples wholesale are going to wind up in hell, subterranean regions. Some go down bodily, some go down as a result of being killed. And uh, they go down spiritually. Drop down to verse 22 to 23. Asher is there in all her company his graves are about him, all of them slain, fallen by the sword. This is talking about <clears throat> they killed each other off. Whose graves are set in the sides of the pit, and her company is round about her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, which caused their terror in the land of the living. Their terror 
is what brought judgment upon them. It turned onto them, and each one winds up being incited to kill each other in the whole. Asher basically was ancient Assyria. So in, um, I think it was Ezekiel 28 somewhere, mm -hmm. Satan is told that he won't have his lands because he's destroyed them. This yeah. is an example of that destruction, is it? Uh, no, that, that's something different. Okay. This is talking about modern day nations over in the Middle East. <coughs> what lands that he had which he won't re get back, as, as, as they're talking about in Ezekiel 28. Uh, that's talking about <clears throat> later on after the tribulation period where he's taking dominion over a lot of people on the earth. Dragon's religion, that's sure. part of his people. He's going to wipe them all out in his madness mm. before he goes down. But that's okay. something okay. different. What this is talking about is a country, <clears throat> modern day Turkey, Iraq, and Syria. Who today are terrorists. <laughs> these are all these countries are lined up against Israel. And uh, at the time the judgment takes place, they are just <clears throat> about to try to go down and wipe out Israel. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Instead of wiping out Israel, they wind up wiping out themselves. 22 to 23. Whose graves are set in the sides of the pit, or companies round about a grave, all of them are slain, fallen by the sword, which caused their terror in the land of the living. <clears throat> now turn to... Luke, 21st chapter, we're tying scripture together here, Luke 21 verse 35. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. So what happens, you're going to have wars, rumors of wars. That's where we're at now. Intensifying to the point where it's interrupted by the Lord angrily pronouncing this judgment. That radically changes everything. You get the judgment falling on the whole world, the whole human race, whatever the individual or individuals or country was doing at the time of the judgment, it's going to fall on them. We just saw some examples of this. The Lord here says, as a snare shall it come on all them. So these people that are doing their thing, going about their business, not realizing what they think is a normal life, which is a detestation in the sight of God, are going to undergo judgment as a result of the things they themselves are doing. Which brings us to the next principle. Scripture teaches <coughs> The judgment pronouncement, although it will be a judgment on those people, is going to be a hope to the prototokas who hear it, and it's going to be a deliverance to the Israelites that hear it. Turn to Joel, third chapter, verse 16. The Lord shall roar out of Zion. This is Jeremiah 25, 30. And utter his voice from Jerusalem. He's talking about heavenly Zion. So when it says Zion, it's talking about the mountain on which the city sits. Mount Zion. Hmm. And it talks about Jerusalem. It's talking about the city itself. So this city 
in the home mountain region is going to ring, resonate with his pronouncement. His, his word is going to for, go forth. And notice what it says. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. <clears throat> so when he makes his pronouncement, the creation responds in terror, fear, uh, total uh, subjugation. He says he pronounces, he makes a pronouncement against his habitation, creation, and everything in it. So the heavens and the earth are going to literally shake at the sound of his judgment. And the Lord will be the hope of his people. Now, <clears throat> the word hope comes from a Hebrew term, Masse, which means shelter. Mm -hmm. His people is referring to all the prototokos, the teachers and the elders. <clears throat> You're going to hear, we are going to hear his voice, and we are going to take heart. Why? Because the things that we are going to be doing are godly. So we'll be rejoicing. We will know when this word goes forth that the judgment that's destroying everybody else is preparing shelter for us. The place is going to be reserved for us. And so at that point we begin teaching. Yes. That's when the XY axis crosses for us. The XY axis, Georgia. <laughs> the Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake but the Lord will be the hope shelter of his people <coughs> the the, uh, the church actually and the strength of the children of Israel you see, you see the division here his people and the children of Israel why is it making that distinction well the word strength there comes from the Hebrew term maos, which means place of protection. Why? <clears throat> because Israel up to this point is resigning itself for this total destruction. You've got all of these nations, the Muslim nations, lined up against her, ready to come down, armed to the teeth to wipe her off the face of the earth. Judgment is pronounced. They know it is the Lord. Now two things happen. They're going to hear the Lord's voice. But they're going to attribute the deliverance not to Elohim but to YHVH. Mm. Will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. That's why the scriptures make a distinction. Elohim is going to be involved with the prototokos. YHVH is going to be involved with Israel. Right. Why? The Lord deliberately makes it that way. Why? Because the last thing that Jesus said before he went to his crucifixion and the people rejected him, he says, your house is left unto you desolate mm. until you say, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord and got nothing to do with you. You won't see me until you call on me now he's protecting them he's guiding them but they have rejected him so the the the, the court is in their the ball is in their Very court cool. mm -hmm. so what will happen is you're going to have turned to deuteronomy just as you're turning up so we should understand that the secular leadership of israel today Mm -hmm. Have no comprehension that they are being protected in any way. Oh no! Well, they were the the the, the <coughs> Orthodox Hasidim would attribute it to YHVH. Sure, right. but the secular leaders will not necessarily no, accept that. No, that thing. no, no. So mm -hmm. from their perspective, everything that's happening is purely because of what they've done. Yeah. Uh, see, it's a rookie mistake. Well, <laughs> what's going to happen is they're going to realize that they run out of steam mm. at this point. That they can't deal with it. It's too much. Too great. That's when the Lord's going to intervene and save them. Okay. Deuteronomy 
Now this takes place after the judgment. What will happen? What we just read sets the beginning of sorrows in motion. The pronouncement. After that, things gel. It is the vision made. <coughs> the prototokus teachers step in. Their students are guided to them. The places of protection in which this can take place. Israel is protected. What will happen is you have the demise of the Adamic order. The fourth kingdom, fourth empire rises. Luciferian stamp this place flat, take dominion over the surface world, over the human race, divide the world up among themselves. While all this is happening, the prototokers are teaching. Just prior to this, you have the gospel being preached on a global scale. So many things happen simultaneously. It all leads to this point, which is Luke 21, 27, 28, the Lord returns, the gathering culminates, the Lord does this. <clears throat> Verse 8, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, this is talking about the Lord, what he does when he returns, Luke 21, 27, to give the Prototokos teaches the inheritance to ch establish the angelic order over the churches, to establish the communities. All of this is this point. He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Israel is going to dominate the surface world after that in, as far as God's order is concerned. YHVH is given dominion at this point. He takes Israel out of all the nations, calls the tribes back to the land. They come, <clears throat> he establishes the Mosaic order society, raises up the Levites, establishes the descendants of King David's line back on the throne, blesses them. You read all this here. He found him in a desert land and in a waste howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eye. He blesses them, uh, um, strengthens them, makes them the number one nation. The land is so fruitful, uh, it's beyond belief of riches. It literally comes flowing with milk and honey. Everybody sits back, everybody is richly blessed till it's coming out of their ears. So we see Israel. Crediting YHVH all the way through the, the tribulation. What what verse do we read to see them recognizing Elohim, and therefore the house is no longer desolate? Uh, tribulation period. When the second coming. Great tribulation. Oh, great tribulation. Okay, great so tribulation. that point. Yes. Yes, because they've made deals, haven't they, with what's his name and what's his name? Yep. The two. Yep. 